the best the college soccer world has to offer. Take the field at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina tonight as we ask, are you ready to crown a national champion? All hail the Seminoles of Florida State as the nation's number one team and the tournament's number one seed. Survive not one but two penalty kick shootouts to get here. Oh, and Florida State are going to the national championship. But a new era of excellence is upon us for Santa Clara as the Broncos bring it in the attack and have racked up 10 goals in the tournament already. We see you, Santa Clara. The Broncos making their way to the NCAA championship game for the first time since 2002. It's the Broncos and the Seminoles for the national championship next. to the 2020 NCAA championship as just for the second time ever, Florida State and Santa Clara face off. Now three ACC teams filled the College Cup field, number one seeded Florida State, the only team still left standing after the Seminoles took care of both Duke and Virginia in penalty kicks in the last two rounds. Santa Clara, the 11 seed, beating second seeded North Carolina in the semifinals to get here. Hi everyone, so glad to have you with us. I'm Jen Hildreth, excited to welcome two-time World Cup champ Julie Foudy into the booth. Lori Lindsay, another U.S. national teamer, will be joining us from the sidelines. And Julie, it has been a very strange year, yet it is always special when you play for a championship. Oh, I love the College Cup, been covering it for so many years because you get this great glimpse into the future and not just domestic future. We're talking international future. Florida State alone, seven different countries represented in Santa Clara, chock full of NWSL talent. And looking at the history for these two teams and programs, Florida State looking for their third national championship in the last seven years. And for Santa Clara, the players talk to us, Julie, about wanting to make their mark. They've had some success, that national championship in yeah. 2001, but it was a while ago. It was two decades ago, whereas Florida State has had most of its success in the last decade. But things are turning around for Santa Clara, and especially when you have two players up front like these two, senior Kelsey Turnbow, she is going to be like a laser tracking balls down as she did in the semifinal. She leads the team with nine goals and four assists and partnered alongside of her up top is sophomore Izzy DeQuilla. And this is another player that's just so dangerous around the box. The combination between the two is so good. And that is a handful for any team. Many coaches saying the best offense they've seen in the country. On the other side for Florida State, beware for Jalen Howell. This is a player many have seen play for the U.S. Women's National Team. Great on set pieces. She is the general for them in the midfield. And she also can capitalize, as you see there, against North Carolina on set pieces. So dangerous in the air. Florida State has scored a goal off of corner kicks the first two matches of this tournament. Now these players for both teams have called North Carolina home for the last three weeks. Now, as this unforgettable NCAA season comes to a close, they lace up one last time. Kickoff between Santa Clara and Florida State is next. The NCAA Women's College Cup is brought to you by Pella Windows and Doors. Tested for extremes, designed for your home. Had a little bit of rain here before kickoff in Cary, North Carolina. Both teams getting some final words of wisdom, some VIPs in the stands as Florida State and Santa Clara Get ready to battle for the NCAA championship and a couple of changes, Julie, to Mark Corian's lineup. He wasn't quite sure if he had a couple of his front runners and Payne and Lynch are out, at least to start. Yeah, same 4-3-3, but nice Swanger coming in up on that right side, we think. Yuji Zhao on the left, same midfield, same back four, but Emily Madrill at that center back position is going to have a handful, as we talked about with those two up front in Daquila and Turnbow. But pay particular attention as well to Julie Doyle on that right side. She loves to run at players. 
And the senior has the pace to do it and the skill to do it. And also on that left side, this is a change for Santa Clara and that 4-4-2. Sydney Smith, the super sub coming in for the start on the left side. We've got a superstar of our own down on the sideline. Lori, Lindsay, what you got? <laughs> well, despite the rain, there's a real buzz in this stadium, and there was a real buzz in the warm-ups as well, a sharpness and focus for both teams, exactly what both coaches would be looking for. For Florida State, it's all about mentality and starting the game, this game fast. And for Santa Clara, they're going to be flying from the beginning, five in the attack. So we expect a wide-open game, a fast game from the beginning. Looking forward to it, Lori. Can't wait to get your take on things from your vantage point down by the field. And without further ado, you've waited long enough for an NCAA championship. This should have happened in the fall. We kick it off now from Kerry. Oh, and I hope Lori is so right about that. I mean, no better words than wide open game, goals in a final. Some similarities in the color. So to clarify for you, Santa Clara, they're red. They are wearing the all red out on the field tonight. Jerry Smith, their head coach in his 34th season, telling us this team was going to go out and he instructed that front five, just as Lori just told you, their number one job, get out and score. He wants at least two goals out of them. That's their objective. Florida State all in white tonight and a couple of changes, first time in 2020, 2021 that the Seminoles will start Nice Wonger and Zhao, two excellent players coming off the bench for Mark Kikorian. Seminoles in their second national championship game appearance in the last three years. They won it when they were last in the final right here on this field in 2018 against North Carolina. Here is Nicewanger getting the start tonight. And it's looking like Nicewanger has gone in on that left side. We had her on the right on the lineup and Zhao on the right. But it does look like they're staying in that 4-3-3. They drop into a 4-5-1 sometimes defensively. But And Nicewanger did play up, up high in 2019, but Zhao has mostly been in the midfield. So mm -hmm. a bit of a new position for her. But if anyone can handle it, Yuji Zhao can do that. There's Clara Robbins. What a wonderful senior season she has had for the Seminoles. Six goals, six assists to lead this team offensively. Gabby Carl plays for the Canadian national team. Over to Jalen Howell, player you spotlighted before kickoff. Madrill, another one of those key players in the back. No Malia Berkeley, Herman Trophy finalist, All-American selection for Florida State this spring. She's already gone on to play professionally. That berkeley Madrill combo of center backs was two of the best center backs I had seen in a very long time. So that's a big miss for Florida State in the spring here. Skylar Smith who got the start tonight. That was a change for Santa Clara, putting some pressure on, but it does go back to Florida State. Here's Carl. Seminoles shut out in their last two matches for the first time since 2015. They've had back-to-back -back matches where they have not scored. They've had to advance through penalty kicks. You heard Lori Lindsay talking about it in the open there, and they wanted to see a boost of mentality coming into this game. Nice movement there with Carl getting it back from Howell in the box. Yao had it on her feet. Robin's playing a much deeper position, it looks like, than where we've seen her. Maybe some more defensive responsibilities with this change to the lineup. And a much better first five for Florida State. As you mentioned, Jen, it had been since 2015 since they've been held scoreless in back-to-back -back games. That was Turnbow. You got a glimpse of the speed there from the number 10 for Santa Clara. This front two may be as good as you'll see in the college game. Anson Dorrance talked about it when his Tar Heel team faced off against Santa Clara in the semifinals. And Mark Krikorian talked about it as he was really scouting, watching a lot of film, watched this team in the semis getting ready. How impressed he was with that front two in particular.
Ball went out of bounds, so it'll go to Santa Clara. <laughs> Sally Menti, freshman of the year in the West Coast Conference, number 24 there on the attack. Here's Turnbow. Out wide she goes to Karen Gore. Got the start at left back. She dropped back, but will still get in the attack. Forward for Smith. Skylar Smith has been a super sub for Santa Clara. And speaking of super, let's look at this Bronco stampede, as I've called it, of all time greats. That is Allie Wagner getting to be a fan. Jordan Angeli, Brandi Chastain, Leslie Osborne. That's Allie right there, and Brandy to her right. Daniel Slayton is here as well. They've got all of them in town. I love to see it. Of course, Allie Wagner, Danielle Slayton, both of those players honored as a part of the 2001 NCAA championship team for Santa Clara. Leslie Osborne on that team as well. Allie Wagner had the game-winning goal and an epic goal celebration. <laughs> fun to be a fan. You don't get to do that very often, do you, Julie? They get that opportunity to come see their alma mater. Uh, a lot of them red hide in, too. I'm proud of them. They promised they'd come with Santa Clara painted across their chest, so I'm a little disappointed that didn't happen. <laughs> Maybe they'll break that out later. It was raining. So it looks like Mark Krikorian for Florida State has opted to go with a man-on-man -man of Turnbow and Daquila. We're going to see how that plays out. Looks like Pav Pavlinsko is on for Daquila. Interesting. Big switch, not big enough. It goes right to Julie Doyle. Stopped in her tracks by Jalen Howell. Up she goes for Nice Wonger. Nesbeth. Looking for a better performance after getting only 14 minutes in the semifinal for Florida State. Turnbow. Marked there by Flynn. The drill to help. Yeah, it's interesting. He's got Lauren Flynn, the center back, marking Turnbow, and he's got Pavlisko, man on man against Aquila. This is how much respect they have for that front two. And then he has Madrill in that center back position floating with Clara Robbins on the right and Gabby Carl on the left. We'll see how this works for them. Different lineup than we've ever seen them do. Yeah. It takes a lot of confidence in your players, I would think, to be able to work on something like that before a final. Foul outside the box. Our center referee, Christina Uncle, tonight. Not a lot there. The intensity definitely feels like it's there for both teams. And as Lori talked about, that was an issue. All the Florida State players knew it. Mark Corian knew it in the start of the semifinal. And Virginia really came after the Seminoles. A bit unlucky, really, not to score. And that's the, that's the key when you're playing a team like Florida State, who wants to hold the ball a lot. When you get those opportunities, and they're so good at holding the ball, if you get an opportunity against Florida State, which we saw against Virginia, and you're not pouncing on that opportunity, it's going to come back to bite you. And Santa Clara knows that. Let's go, some changes in the lineup, some changes in the formation. A lot of tinkering going on for Mark Gregorian and Florida State. Defense with a freshman, a true freshman in goal, Christina Roque, who has been absolutely spectacular when she's had to be, which hasn't been often up until about the last round. And then she's made saves in each of the penalty kick shootouts, shots from the mark, if you will. 
some pressure from Turnbow, but this Florida State defense, first three matches of the tournament, just two shots on goal allowed. Virginia really brought it though, five in the semifinal. I believe all of them in the first half even. I mean, that first half was something to come in at halftime 0-0. Zero, zero. You could see Virginia deflated by it because they knew you only get so many looks against Florida State. Turnbow down to the ground. Between Turnbow and Aquila, 17 goals between that front two in 11 games played. Lori, what you seeing down there? Well, you know, Julie's been talking about the man marking in the back on Daquila and Turnbow, and that's exactly right. It's going to come down to those midfielders over Santa Clara, making sure they get some runs, interchange, making the runs out of the back if those two are going to be man marked. And also, to Julie's point, if you're going to start fast, you've got to take these chances early on, especially in the rain. At Lori, it's as if you read my mind. I was just thinking, if they're man marked, what do I do as a coach? You start flying midfielders, right? You start flying them in, and they're going to have to then, because their shape is going to be all over the place with the man marking, which is something they're not used to. So you've got to then counter that with, okay, well then let's even pull you out of shape even more by flying midfielders. No one wants to track midfielders. And if there's a team that can do that, though, it's Jerry Smith's Broncos in terms of their philosophy, their understanding. They're not playing formations. They're understanding what the game's throwing at them. But they're def definitely going to need to be sending those signals from the sideline to make sure they can unbalance this lower block from Florida State. Yeah, and the way that Santa Clara sets up in that 4-1, so really Nezu is that one, that holding midfielder, and then they have three attacking center mids and two up front in Turnbow and Daquila. Those front five really have the license. He said they are uber aware. <laughs> well, I think was his quote, uber aware <laughs> that they have the license to go. I say, you score goals, you get me two. That's what I want out of you today. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that's a coach I would want to play yes. for right there. <laughs> you don't have to defend. <laughs> Thank you. Well, somebody has to defend, <laughs> but just not you. Yes. <laughs> if you're in that front five. Yeah, Jerry Smith said, you know, I think I could put together a game plan where we could shut out Florida State, but I'm looking for some offense. We're going to go after it. Broncos had the ball in the box. And there's a glimpse of exactly what Lori was talking about right there. Menti, the attacking center mid for Santa Clara, trying to get through because Lauren Flynn pulled out of shape with Turnbow in the midfield. Chance in transition here, just three back at the moment. Nesbeth sees it, has McFarland to her left, can't get it there. Daquila will go back to Gore. Nesbeth takes it away again. So I know it's still early, Julie, but do you feel like if what we've been talking about with Jerry Smith's plan was really keeping that attack-minded focus, is it more of a defensive focus with this shift for Florida State? Yeah, it's really interesting because you hear a lot of coaches go, I don't want to make a change so dramatic to suit another team. But this is him saying, Krikorian, I have that much respect for Turnbo and Daquila and what they can do that maybe will disrupt this rhythm if we deny them ever even getting the ball. He knows how dangerous they are as a pair. He talked about denying the pass in to Daquila and Turnbow. Well, this is another way is you're denying them even getting the ball by trying to mark them man to man. And if you can take those two out of the game, his idea is, OK, then maybe we can create something offensively based off of that because they're not going to be as threatening. It's an interesting play. I like it. I like when coaches make changes. These two both have won NCAA championships, two for Mark Krikorian in Florida State, 2014, 2018, one for Jerry Smith in 2001. As many of those former Broncos in the stands cheering on this team as they send something special with this group. Nesbitt lost it. The pass back is where it's gone from Daquila. The last couple of times she's not been able to turn. 
giveaway in the middle of the field. Yu Zhi Zhao up to McFarland, who is alone in a sea of red, wisely waits for help. Zhao has played for the Chinese senior national team. Pretty methodical here from Florida State, looking for an opening. Two regular starters not in this starting 11. We're not sure how much, if at all, they'll be available. And Heather Payne and Christina Lynch. I do think, Jen, one of the downsides to this shift by Krikorian, though, is Clara Robbins at that right back position. She's a going to be a winger type, but still, this is their leading goal scorer, six goals, six assists, and now she's having to attack really from a deep position. And she's just further away from goal. And yeah. we've seen how good she's been this year. What a story that is. The senior, redshirt senior, hadn't scored at all until her senior year this year, this season in the fall. This season is a long season, so we have to <laughs> clarify. <is>. <laughs> Covers two years this year in the fall. And now she's leading the team with six goals and six assists. It's a great story after recovering from ACL surgery for all of you out there recovering from ACL surgery. No, it will get better. There's a lot of you out there I know watching. Good to have those examples, I'm sure. You might have noticed a change there. Jody Brown, number 10, young Jamaican national team player for Florida State, came in for Yuji Zhao, who I believe the issue was some blood that they were trying to get cleared up. They were trying to bandage up her leg. And you've heard Jamaica, Canada, China. I mean, this is the makeup of this Florida State team. Brown from Jamaica trying to catch this ball. Can't. And Mark Krikorian has done very well with utilizing all of this international talent to build his powerhouse. And that is the element that Jody Brown brings. There's a pace to her that can stretch defenses, and he wants to do just that. And she does just that. One of the biggest questions could be, as this match goes on, though, is now you don't have these super subs off the bench, really, for either team, because Skylar Smith, number four, had been mm -hmm. that for Santa Clara. She starts tonight, and now you've got some question marks for Florida State in your front line, and you've got your, your big three off the bench. Mm -hmm. They were all in the match. We'll see if Zhao gets back out there after she gets cleaned up. To be expected, though, with how long this year has been, how long in terms of just the grind these players have had to go through. This is their third week in this exact same space, this bubble in North Carolina. We asked how that was going. <laughs> They're like, it's been long, but it's been good. <laughs> Thankfully, they have their setup of some really good team rooms. <laughs> Nesbeth right on the logo in the middle. Remind you to come back at 8 Eastern. It is Championship Monday, baby, as we crown another champion. This one in men's soccer, Marshall, Indiana. Should be a great one. You can go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships, for more information. <laughs> Zhao back on the field. There are the team rooms we're talking about. That's Santa Clara's. And I cannot tell you how important these rooms are. This is where they eat, they play video games, <laughs> they have board games. Uh, for the hours and hours on the road and the time you're together, you need a room like that. Florida State has one as well. They had a ping pong table. They said they had everything, coloring books, nail polish. We said, okay, well then who, who, there has to be a tournament bracket for ping pong, right? There was, there was a commissioner as well. <laughs> and uh, in what could be a controversy, the commissioner wound up winning the ping pong championship. That's that right. was Leilani Nesbeth. Nesbeth, some controversy <laughs> there, breaking news. <laughs> Just lucky you and Lori didn't get in on the action. That may be the future for all schools. Get a team room and you're gonna make it to the collegiate final. <laughs> well, especially if you're, stuck in a bubble for three weeks. There we go, there's the champ. <laughs> you know, this tournament's so different in so many ways, just 48 teams. 
not with our usual 64. Played in the spring, that's never happened before. Defending national champs, sorry, Joel Stanford, not in the tournament for the first time ever in the 39 year history of the event and the entire tournament taking place in one spot. Zhao, first team all ACC selection, Yuji Zhao. Even this season, coming off the bench, and this season for Florida State officially all happened in the fall. No official games for the Seminoles. Very different roads to get here for these two teams. Florida State won the ACC championship, were co-champs in the regular season with North Carolina in the fall. Then they just played some professional teams, and some men's teams, a couple scrimmages in the spring. Whereas Santa Clara had to play their whole schedule. Nothing going on in the fall. They had to shelter at home. Won the West Coast nice. Conference Championship. Seven games. That is amazing for Santa Clara. And not just for this season, since literally 2019 for yeah. Santa Clara. Before Seven. they started this tournament, yep. Crazy when you think about that. Vastly different roads. Both winding up in the same destination. Santa Clara content to just let Florida State knock it around. They're very good at that. And Lori, what more can you add for us? Well, just going back to back to what we were thinking, this game would be a lot more wide open, fast paced than it is. And I spoke with associate head coach for the Broncos, Greg Murphy, asking him about the band marking. He said that they're not going to change anything right now. They're not hurting them. Stick with the game plan. Well done, reporter Lori down there. I love it. Turnbow. Our first of the match for either team. Finally, a little space for Kelsey Turnbo. And this is a player who loves to face up. Gets the little nutmeg. Not easy to do against really good defender and Emily Madrill. And that is a nice corner kick pickup for Santa Clara. Senior Julie Doyle. Over to take it for the Broncos. Has Turnbo short. Won't use her. Drives it into the box. Sent back in. And a whistle blows. Offside. No shots for either team. Both trying to figure one another out in this NCAA championship yeah, you game. Have, you have two coaches that are tinkerers, as they call <laughs> themselves. <laughs> and really good tacticians. And you could see them with their wheels turning going, OK, I see what you're doing. There's going to be some adjustments at halftime as well, which is always fun to see. But I do think, and to Lori's point, that what you're seeing Florida State do when they're on offense is after their man marking, they're coming off to try and present an angle to help their team, of course, Florida State. And I'm talking Pavlisko and Lauren Hill to help them offensively. And that's when really it could be an opportunity for Santa Clara to pounce because then their number's down with Emily Bedrill, the only one on that back line with those two. NCAA championship between the number one seed, Florida State, number 11 seed, Santa Clara, champions in the West Coast Conference, champions in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Jen Hildreth, Julie Foudy, Lori Lindsay, excited to have you with us on this championship evening from Cary, North Carolina. Robbins, Jody Brown, subbed in for Nesbeth. So now McFarland, Brown, Nice Wonger, Zhao, main players up in the attack for Florida State. We wondered, would Florida State be able to survive another match without a goal? They've shut out their last two opponents. That's the good news. But they've also been shut out, had to win it. And they've been perfect from the penalty spot 
in the shootout the last two rounds against this high-scoring Santa Clara Broncos team. Would it be enough? So far, they've held tight, keeping that Bronco attack at bay. Robbins gets an opportunity to move forward. Carl overlapping on this near side. Three defenders around her. It goes out on Florida State via goal kick. Hard to see on television as well, but there's this consistent drizzle coming down. And I think both teams got to look for that shot from distance as well, because this ball is going to be skipping all over the place. Get a better look at it there in front of the lights. Turnbow. Broncos having to really work to figure out how to turn her loose. Florida State getting here, had a bye in the first round, as did the top 16 teams who were seeded in this tournament. Then they had a couple of three goal games, and then it's been the shootouts. Advanced on penalties in both the quarterfinal and the semifinal against ACC foes. Howell is tripped at midfield. She wants a card for Makoto Nezu, and Christina Uncle obliges, agrees. Haven't seen much of how offensively yet, but when she can get a hold of the ball and start commanding that midfield, she can take control of the game. Nezu now going to have to be careful with sitting on that one yellow. She is that holding midfield who does a lot of the tracking and the tackling for them, for Santa Clara. You know who's been really quiet so far as well? We haven't said Sydney Smith much, and we haven't said Julie Doyle as much. And I think those two, sorry, Skylar Smith, those two outside midfielders have to get forward. Chance on the turnover. Nice Wonger can hit it from there. McFarland, a senior in the box, got her foot to it. But was challenged by the goalkeeper, Marley Nicholas. Florida State shot by number two, Christian McFarland. Best chance there for Florida State. This is a little pickup from the pressure, misplayed. Nice little ball in McFarland. You think she's touched it too far, lets it get away from her. Nicholas off her line. And really that touch by McFarland just lets her down. Too much on that. First corner kick now for the Seminoles. This is an area you talked about, Julie that they can be very dangerous. They scored off a corner in each of their first two matches of this tournament. Zhao yeah. toward the back post. Yeah. Howell well marked. Zhao yeah. wants it back, she'll get it. Cross it goes again. Turnbow back there defending, but the defending not done yet for the Broncos. Robbins playing with such confidence after being out. Was there a foul? Christina Uncle says no. Ooh. Here it is. Clara Robbins doing everything right, getting in the box, going at players. Oh, to me, that looks like a penalty kick. We'll see from this angle. I think she catches her. You saw Uncle say she thought she just lifted her foot. I think that's a penalty kick. So does Mark Krikorian. Sometimes moments like that can fire up a team. And Florida State, you can see why they're so dangerous on set pieces. Not only did they get a good look off the initial ball, but they kept the pressure on in the attack. They had numbers. It's still down in this end. Zhao to Nice Wonger.
and really the first time we've seen Clara Robbins in the box getting forward. That's the danger she can create. Now she's having to do it from a deeper seam. She's in the attack now, trying to make something happen for the Seminoles. And right now, Santa Clara doesn't have the ball at all, having such a hard time just getting out. And that's the pressure of Florida State, but just careless mispasses. Got to be better. They're got to be cleaner on possession for sure. And that's one thing that, you know, Jerry's going to talk about. That's a big one for him. Zhao trying to set up Jody Brown. There it is again. Every time they try and come out, Florida State there to put it back. Switch over to Carl. Not where Jow needed it to be. Can Santa Clara keep the ball? Doyle. Had it tapped away by Lauren Flynn. Lori, we've seen some momentum shifts down there, haven't we, with these two teams? Certainly, and that's what I was going to say. And this methodical play is really benefiting Florida State, allowed them to get into the game. Oh. You can see Sarah, Santa Clara just out of sorts. They either got to do what Julie had just said. Or do this right here, Lori. Turnbow on the ball, and shot is blocked. <laughs> Which is get Smith or Doyle in the game. Or start to make some substitutes, whether it's Halverson to get on, see if they can disrupt the play. Cross in the middle. Crowd starting to get loud. Great representation from both sides of this NCAA championship game. So wonderful to see a crowd, hear a crowd, oh, feel that my energy. Oh gosh, I want to cry, I'm so happy. <laughs> Live on site, calling a game, who am I? <laughs> oh, joy. You know these players feel it too. Santa Clara looking to unlock this defense. Turbo comes up with it again. Turbo, little hesitation into the box. Her shot is saved. Oh, great save by Roque because it is wet. And this is the danger that Turbo can create. Does this on her own. So good at spending defenders. Fakes a little shot there, gets Madrill to bite. And then with a little window and a little gap, just trying to sneak one past Roque. Great save. But that is the, the danger of Kelsey Turnbow. She's taken this corner as well for Santa Clara. Headed away by Madrill. Ball back into the box. The bounce and Roque has it. And that face you see in Christina Roque, that's what you see the whole match. <laughs> I told Mark Krikori, and I said I almost forgot she was a freshman because she's just so steady back there and so good. So calm. Let's go back to that possible PK, shall we? Can't yeah. get enough looks at this one. Here's Clara Robbins getting in the box. This is a different look from the other side. She did drag the leg a little, but I still think there was enough contact there, and that's a better angle. I do think that's a PK still. I stay with my original decision. Split second decision making having to be done by our referee crew, and you certainly respect the fact that they want to make sure if they're going to call that foul in the box and give a penalty in an NCAA championship, they want to be sure Christina Uncle just wasn't on that play. Easy. 
No score so far between these two teams. You can get low scoring affairs once you get to this championship. One can sometimes be enough. Jody Brown looking for connection with Nicewanger. Broken up by Alex Luera, the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year in the back line for the Broncos. Well done by Lauren Flynn. Hard for Santa Clara to have an outlet because of that man marking. Typically, Skylar Smith would be bouncing it off Turnbo or Dequila and just not available. Our next MLS match is on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and app Saturday afternoon, and it's a Western Conference matchup. The second place LA Galaxy hosting the Portland Timbers. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Kaylee Halverson, the substitution, coming on for Turnbow, number 11 for number 10 in that Santa Clara attack. Halverson, one of those players you may have heard Lori mention when she talked about the Broncos just trying to find a way through. Turnbow had some good moments. Scary moment when she was playing some defense on the other end as a part of that potential penalty kick, but we'll see if Halverson can make a difference. Jow to Brown, who's the youngest player at the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup, Jody Brown. Second youngest, excuse me, at that tournament. She was 17 years old as Jamaica made its debut. It really is remarkable the amount of international players Mark has had come through this program and all the different countries that he's developed relationships with. There have been 30 players to come out of Florida State to appear on their senior national team. Right, full national team. 26 of those for countries not the United States. <laughs> Just four for the full U.S. team. That includes Jalen Howell, who we saw in the She Believes Cup. Seven countries, including the United States, on this roster alone. Another one of those coming into the match Everybody now, Ron Ewai. Ewai. Out of Japan, she's replacing Uji Zhao. And Heather Payne is coming into the match as Number well. Uh, Ireland Robin. international replacing Robin. So Payne, one of those players who has been starting for the Seminoles. See if she can gut out a little something extra for the Knolls here with under 10 minutes to play in our first half. Imagine, Julie, moments like this, it's, it's waiting for a trigger, right? For Santa Clara, they're going to be patient until they decide it's time to go. They do get the takeaway. Gore has it. Not for long. EY wins it back. And it's going to be interesting to see what those adjustments are because Santa Clara is having, although Turnbow did have that one look at the end, but they are having a hard time getting to Dequila and Turnbow. So what are the adjustments from Jerry Smith? Here is EY. Across for Carl. Nice Wonger. Thought about it. Chips to McFarland. And now we've got a foul against Santa Clara just outside the 18. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with Lorera. To me, it looked like it was actually a foul on Alex Loera, number 22 for Santa Clara. We'll see it here. She's going to the ball here. Ooh. I agree with you on that one, Julie. That's, that's a tough break. You can understand the frustration for the Broncos and Loera. And that's one where I just think you just say play on, right? Two players battling for a ball. Could a set piece be the difference in this match? Still locked up at zero. Jenna Nicewanger, a sophomore, 
Ron Ewai, a freshman, standing near the ball for Florida State. Nice Wonger drives it right into the wall. Ewai had a chance at the rebound. Payne keeps it in for Florida State. Owl. Swanger wanted to swing that with her left. And I think with the rain, with it being so wet, one of the things you got to be thinking about when you're on that ball is I need to get this on frame and over the wall and let the pieces fall where they may. Christina Lynch, regular starter into the match now for Nice Swanger. And I give Doyle a lot of credit, too, in that wall, Julie. She might have flinched, but she didn't move. Number 13 for Santa Clara, and she stopped that ball from Nice Wonger. <laughs> uh, Wagner and Brandy bringing their normal cheer. <laughs> we could just keep a camera that we had on the side over yeah. here. All, the whole time, that'd be entertaining, I'm sure. Danielle Slayton also right there. <laughs> Just such an outpouring of support for the Santa Clara team. All those alums saying, we're coming to see this group try to win its second NCAA championship. Our next WNBA games on ESPN2 and the app coming up tomorrow night. Diana Tarazi and the Mercury in Washington to take on the Mystics at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Then Asia Wilson and the Aces square off against Brianna Stewart and the Storm. WNBA stars ready to shine as that league gets going. Love it. 25th season. Insane. Now Lynch somehow got to that ball, but it winds up with the Broncos, but here comes Lynch again. Halverson, it'll stay with Santa Clara. Played it well. Menti wide open in the middle. Skylar Smith. Every shot for Skylar Smith has been on target this season. She has three goals in the tournament, but we have not seen her get involved yet. Bugness, freshman. Starting for the Broncos on defense, stepped up to win that. Every time Daquila trying to touch the ball, Pavlisko's just nudging, 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 always there. And that actually plays a toll on you as a player, too. When you're man marked, there's the two of them. Daquila, number nine for Santa Clara. 11 is Pavlisko, who's man marking her. It starts to wear on you because you're not used to that person next to you all the time and it starts to get in your head a little bit. Saying this from experience where I was like, no, ah! <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> well, both teams trying to find an edge in this match. They've only met one time before. That was in 2001, the year that Santa Clara won the NCAA championship, but they met much earlier in the season that year in a tournament in Wake Forest, so actually in the state of North Carolina. Broncos winning it four to one in that first ever meeting. 
I do really think one of the adjustments, though, that Jerry's going to talk about when we catch him at halftime is how do you get Smith and Doyle more engaged? Because there is space on those flanks. With the way this is setting up for Florida State and those man marking, you got to get them forward. you got to push them higher. Get them involved. Getting running at players, which we know both can do very well. Gianna Mitchell just came on for McFarland at the tip of the spear in that Florida State attack. Menti has a chance to turn. Those runners in front of her on their way into the box, but too much pressure from Florida State to allow her to get it there. Bubness. Halverson wants it, gets it. There's the turn. This could start the attack for Santa Clara to the end line. Halverson ran out of room. Just that last touch takes her at such a wide angle that it's hard to wrap your hips around that one. About a minute and a half remaining in the first half of this NCAA championship matchup between the number one seed, number one team in the country, Florida State Seminoles, who did not play an official game in 2021 until this NCAA tournament. They felt they were ready. They've proved it so far. Santa Clara, meanwhile, had just seven games since November of 2019 to the start One of this NCAA remaining. tournament. In the Not hand. enough time for the tinkerer, Jerry Smith, to do as much <laughs> tinkering as he would prefer, but he's also done quite well. Get this Broncos team back in the final. Broncos take it. Look for D'Aquila, who has a goal or an assist in every NCAA tournament match so far for Santa Clara. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, zero. First half winds up scoreless. So advantage for the state defense, or, or what do you think, well, Julie? Well, it, it's interesting how that game took a momentum shift with Florida State, I think, having the better of that second half. When they put some pressure in their attacking third, every time they lose the ball, they'd win it back. But both teams really having a hard time, whether it's the rain that's affecting that or just the switch in formation, having a hard time holding the ball as much as we're used to seeing them be consistent in possession. And because of that, there's not a lot of flow. There's not a lot of rhythm. This game isn't as open as we thought it would be. But gosh, I can't wait to see the adjustments that are going to be happening here at halftime and to hear from both coaches because you know both of their minds are going. We will get you set up for those. Santa Clara shut out in the first half of this NCAA tournament for the first time. We'll hear what Jerry Smith has to say about it when we come back right now. Zeros on the scoreboard between Santa Clara and Florida State. little rain coming down in Cary, North Carolina as we are at halftime of our national championship matchup between number one Florida State, number 11 seeded Santa Clara. Take a look back at some of our highlights from our first half. 0-0 zero, zero the scoreline, but there were some chances for both teams. There were some early looks and some late looks for Florida State. There's that drizzle you talked about. And this was Turbo earlier on getting around the corner. On the other side, McFarland for Florida State. And here's the big one. Clara Robbins going down in the penalty box. No call. And then on the other side, Turnbow again takes the shot. Almost gets this one past her okay. What a great save that is. And then the foul. Lorera 
and Jenna Nyswanger steps up for that free kick. Doyle doing well to block that one. And that's about it for that first half for both teams. Yeah, just two shots apiece. Those two shots for Santa Clara tying for the fewest in any half this season. This is a team that averages just under 18 shots per match, but my goodness, the possession. <laughs> 71% in favor of Florida State after the first 45 minutes. Plenty more coming your way. You're watching the NCAA College Cup on ESPN. Go Knowles! Welcome back, about ready to start our second half in Cary, North Carolina. But before we do so, we're joined by Florida State head coach, Mark Krikorian. All right, Mark, you threw out a formation we weren't quite <laughs> expecting there. What? Tell us what you thought about it. Well, we know that um, they have a, um, a fantastic attacking team, and we thought that if we got a little bit more of the ball, it would make it a little bit harder for them in their uh, transition and uh, uh, make their midfield block have to work a little bit more uh, to start the game. How did you think it went, Coach, and what do you need to do to be better offensively coming off of that? Yeah, I thought that um, our kids followed what it was that we asked them to do. Now we need to, when we get the ball forward, get ourselves uh, more numbers in the box, more dynamic movements in the box, um, and, and do a little better job creating the goal. Mark, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye. 45 minutes to go in this NCAA championship matchup. No score between our two teams. For Florida State, this is what they've been accustomed to the last couple of matches. Those were both 0-0 draws after double overtime, which they advanced on penalty kick shootouts. Different feeling, though, for Santa Clara. This is a team that has been scoring at a pretty good clip in this tournament. Ten goals. Lori Lindsay down on the sideline. What you got, Lori? Well, I just spoke with Greg Murphy, associate head coach for the Santa Clara Bron Broncos, and he said if things stay the same, they could do a formation change, whether it's a 3-5-2 or a 3-6-1 with a box in the midfield. But they have to be able to keep the ball, and they also have to be able to find the flank space. And last thing, if anything doesn't change as well, they would send Aquila and Turnbow out wide just to separate that back line for Florida State and look to see if they can send midfield runners through. I love the chess match. Will Mark continue to go man on man, woman on woman, we should say. Will Budge, both programs shown they can and will adjust as needed. Off we go for our second half from Cary, North Carolina. Jen Hildreth, a couple of U.S national team studs along with me, Julie Foudy, Lori Lindsay, a couple of those in the stands as well. We saw both of the regular starters in the attack for Florida State come off the bench in Christina Lynch and Heather Payne. Same starting 11 that started the match for Florida State with Yuji Zhao on the ball now, number 33, and Jenna Nicewanger getting the start. A little too ambitious there to pick out Gabby Carl on the far side. So in these these first opening minutes, appears that that is still the play for Florida State. They are gonna man mark Turnbow and Aquila. And there you can see Pablisco. It certainly is a strategy you do not see employed all that often, at least at the highest level. Remember, 71% of the possession in the first half went to Florida State. Some of it was like this, with both teams being patient, biding their time. And you'd think Santa Clara can probably live with Florida State having more of the ball, but not that much more. No, when you looked at those numbers, 71%, that that's got to be astonishing for Santa Clara because this is a team that's used to controlling the tempo, holding the ball. 
But give credit to Florida State. They made it very hard for Santa Clara to have some buildup because they don't have those two outlets that they typically bounce balls off of in their two center forwards. Nice long are found McFarland. A little bit of space for the Seminoles to work with. Here's Robbins. How often can they get her up into the attack? She had the moment that could have potentially given Florida State a penalty. Wasn't called in the first half. Here is Robbins with a lot of space. So good with the ball at her feet. Six goals this season for Robbins. The first of her career, she battled injury for the first couple of years. Everybody but the goalkeeper now pushed up for Florida State above that midfield line. No Malia Berkeley for this Florida State Seminole team, the recently named All-American Herman Trophy finalist, along with Jalen Howell. She's playing professionally, hasn't been with the team all spring. Doyle shielding off Carl. And this will set Florida State up for a free kick. And this is precisely where Santa Clara does not want to give them set pieces. So good in the air. Jalen Howell in particular for Florida State. Yuji Zhao, such a deft touch on the delivery. We'll see what she opts to do. There's number six, Jalen Howell for Florida State. Jowell's ball in the box. Howell was the target. Nesbitt heads it back toward the goal. It's down, but not out. Now the whistle is blown as there was a little too much contact by Florida State. Well done by Nicholas to get something on this. Oh, it wasn't even her, it was her defender that did it. This time, trying to hold onto it with the rain is so difficult. It has been a consistent drizzle here, everything wet. On cue, Karen Gore just slipped for Santa Clara, was moving the ball up the field and went right down to the ground. And we've had quite a good bit of rain coming down. And now Gore, sophomore, started every match this season for Santa Clara is down. You saw her grab her shoulder right away. And she's a player that can provide some versatility for the Santa Clara team. She can play in the back line. She can play in the midfield, the back line that's missing. Sophia Jones, by the way, one of their leaders out with an Achilles injury. Lori, what are you seeing? Well, we've seen this game or this second half start off a bit methodical again with a slow play from Florida State. And just looking at Santa Clara, they're going to be the best if they can start to push the pace. So can they get more pressure, get players around the ball, and then when they win it, find the first pass, connect passes, and start putting Florida State under pressure because right now the slower pace is benefiting Florida State. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more, Lori. And that's the player that we just mentioned, Sophia Jones, a senior. Her career is over. She said she's not going to try to play anymore, but Jerry Smith just could not say enough good things about how mm -hmm. valuable this young woman was to his program. And she's here, look, she's been here yeah. in this bubble for three weeks, riding that scooter around. Oh, I mean, the, and look at that picture. Look at the, the players' reactions to her and having her here is tremendous. He said it's a coach's dream. Did you hear me? I can speak. I was, able to, I was able to speak to Sophia Jones before the game just about what it meant for her to be here at this tournament. And she had the option to get surgery during the tournament or get it three days before. And she opted to go three days before because she wanted 24 teammates helping her through her recovery. <laughs> I think she's helping them as well, Lori, just by being here. You both 
tremendous leaders in your careers know how valuable that is to a team. And I asked her about the difference between leading from the field and leading off, and she says no changes. She's able to offer some insight to her back line whenever they come off at halftime or after the game. It's been a real benefit to have different eyes and along with the coaching staff. Yuji Zhao challenging that back line of Santa Clara right now, but good clearance. It's actually Skylar Smith who'd stepped up defensively. Try to help out in the back. Eden White trying to defend now as McFarland makes her way through. Slide tackle from Loetta. And she gets a card for that play. And a challenge for Santa Clara right now, very reactive. And there's good reason why with that tackle you see there by Loretta. Catches McFarlane entirely. But, but to Lori's point earlier, it's just too slow. They're sitting in a low block, block, and when they are trying to get out, they can't get enough numbers out. So they've got to pick up where they're pressing, I think, and also then get players up the field by holding the ball and allowing them time to get forward. Jenna Nicewanger, who has assisted off a corner kick already in this tournament. Good on set pieces. Her left-footed ball. Up and over everybody. And really, this is one I think you would much rather see whipped in hard, flying across the face of that, and all you need is a deflection. A misdirection on that one to get it in the back of the net. <laughs> Sally Menti, freshman out of Seattle, Washington, looking to get on the ball for Santa Clara. There she is, West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year. Smith helps her out. Eden White, junior on that back line, has had to step in for the injured Sophia Jones. So tightly matched in this matchup, ACC, WCC, and three ACC teams in this College Cup. Florida State, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida State, the only one left. And the Knolls trying to break the streak. This is the third time that's happened with three ACC teams in College Soccer's Final Four. And it's been a team from the West Coast that's won in both previous occurrences, 2011 and 2013. You know what I'm going to say to that one, Jen? West Coast, best coast, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was Stanford, I should say, in 2011, <laughs> UCLA there you 2013. Go. There you go. <laughs> I just give a huge standing ovation to these players and all the teams for what they've had to endure this season. Talking to so many different players and coaches from various programs, it's just mentally exhausting for them. And they have been in bubbles, they haven't been able to see family. I mean, they're ecstatic they're able to play, of course, and super grateful and appreciate the heck out of it. But it's also okay to realize it's really hard. It's been hard on these players. so. Great to see them able to finally play in this final game, but boy, what a season it's been. And we've all had to change up how we do things in one way or another throughout this past year. Hopefully seeing a light at the end of the tunnel soon. And Nicewanger trying to get on the end of this ball. One touch! Boy, that one could have been trouble, but Luera stayed with it. Pavlisko, outside back for Florida State. The Seminoles a little shuffled at the moment. Lori, what are you seeing? 
I'm just looking at this lineup still for Santa Clara. At some point in time, you just have to start playing your game and the things, controlling the things that you can control, which is stepping up your pressure, getting out of your own box. Chance here, Lori. Nice Wonger swings it across. Back. Up and out. Because right now, Santa Clara is playing so timid. They're pinned back in. They got to step up. They have the equal numbers out there. And here's Nice Wonger with that earlier ball in, having success in that right gap on that right seam. And, and you heard Jerry Smith tell us on the phone yesterday, I would rather die by a thousand deaths than play in a low blo block, right? <laughs> Against this Florida State team. So I cannot see that being the halftime talk. He yeah. said, because in the end, you just lose the penalty kicks anyway, so what does it matter? Right, so Julie, I think the actual quote was, if we were to go into something like a low block, it would feel like dying a slow death, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> yes, and that's what they're doing right now, actually. So uh, I could not agree more, Laura, is you got to step that line of confrontation up. Look at how deep Dequila is. Turnbow is the only one high. You can see Menti just there, the center midfielder, urging them to come with her. And I can't think that's by design to go into this low block. McFarland to Nesbeth, Jow. Yeah, and Julie, there, it, Florida State hasn't proven that they're so dangerous in the attack. And that's what's so interesting about Santa Clara playing so cautious. McFarland hasn't been dangerous. They haven't been able to get in behind on any occasion except maybe the questionable call on the penalty kick. So just step things up, look to see if you can start to penetrate, play your game. Yeah, I think it, it's going to help that they've moved Clara Robbins, number 26 for Florida State, higher back in the midfield because I think she gives them an offensive edge. And we know with this rain and how wet it is, I would have her launching balls in from distance because Clara Robbins can hit a ball. Madrill, long touch, got away with it. Here is Robbins, right at midfield, back to Madrill. So dangerous when she gets up in the attack for Florida State, touches it forward, Yuji Zhao, one on one! Nicholas touched it just enough. You can see Santa Clara looking over at the side ref, that had to have been offside. It looked offside from up here as well. Surprised we didn't see a flag go. Didn't harm him in the end, but that did look a couple yards off by my naked eye. No VAR, thank goodness. And this is something where Madrill has done all season. She loves to step into midfield and get forward. A little one-two with Clara Robbins. And then she pulls the defense, pulls them. They suck into her. She finds the seam wide. And it's that touch by Zhao that, again, we've seen it with McFarland. We've now seen it with Zhao. It's just letting them down. That technique in the box is just not as clean as we're accustomed to seeing from these players. Well, Julie, we're sure happy to have you and Lori both on the call. I know you've been keeping quite busy. And part of that, your podcast, Laughter Permitted. What you got going on oh, here lately with the podcast? Look that. Yeah, we oh love to gosh, listen. Oh my gosh, it's been so much fun. Season five, we're just about to wrap season five. It's been a lot of fun. Candace Parker, Abby Wombach, a lot of soccer players as always, but all amazing women and humans that I get to talk to. Such a gift to be able to do that. Well, you, you make it fun, as you always do. And I hear you've been laying off the donuts recently, oh, but it's Janet's. always okay to bring those back. <laughs> it's trying. <laughs> it's very trying. I just sense there's got to be some frustration for Santa Clara not being able to play their game at all. Dequila hasn't had it enough. That was Gore. 
That was a tough foul. It looked like in the middle, Leilani Nesbitt came right in the back of Julie Doyle. And I think if Florida State is going to have that success, here's the foul. What we just saw with Madrill to Robbins, if you include Howell in that mix in the middle, going up the spine sometimes is the most direct way. And those are three excellent players that are playing right up the spine of Florida State. I would have Madrill taking more chances. And then, and then I go back to Santa Clara for this second half. Jerry talked about it at halftime. He didn't have yet the success that he'd hoped on the flanks. She replaces number 13, Alverson just came back into the match for Santa Clara. Remember, you are allowed a re-entry in the second half in college soccer. Jody Brown came on for Florida State in place of Nesbeth. Got a glimpse there of the Marshall men watching. They'll be up next, Marshall, Indiana, and the NCAA Men's Championship. Dallin Cup, Devin Kerr, Lori Lindsay on the call for that one at 8 p.m. In the box, near corner. Roque was ready. That's the matchup Santa Clara wants, though. Doyle isolated out wide. She loves to run at players, has the pace to do this. And that's exactly the matchup that Santa Clara is wanting to get. And this is exactly what Jerry Smith and his coaching staff is looking from Santa Clara to step up their pressure, look to see if they can force the turnovers, and look to see if they can get it wide where the space has been this entire game. We'll see how Florida State can adjust to that now that the pressure starts to change for Santa Clara. Both teams, we've been eager to see how they will adjust to one another. Brown running around, McFarland on the sideline. It's tapped out, stays with Florida State. And do those decisions, do those adjustments. Feel forced a little more as that clock ticks down. Yuji Zhao, top of the box. No chance to turn, but nice Wonger in support. Nice Wonger's left foot and shot on it to go for Florida State! Oh my, what a shot from Jenna Nice Wonger! Jenna Nyswanger consistently dangerous on the offensive side. And when Santa Clara doesn't step with any urgency, she thinks, why not? I've got a little gap here, a little angle, and bends it perfectly. It was fighting. This is the perfect angle right here. Watch how this ball just wants to come back in. And it's a game of inches, folks. And that's what it does. Don't step fast enough, and Nyswanger punishes Santa Clara for it. What a finish that is. The two players that have come off the bench for Mark Krikorian all season long, but got the start tonight. Jenna Nyswanger, Yuzi Zhao, connecting on the goal to put the Seminoles out in front. That was the first goal in 304 minutes for Florida State. They've had a gut out their last few matches. We said earlier in the show it had been since 2015 that they had been held scoreless in back-to-back -back games. We actually looked up the math for what that would be for three games. So that was 1998. Yeah. It had been since they'd been held scoreless in three games. So I had a feeling that wasn't going to happen. But that is the breakthrough that 
will open this game up. And it's going to be interesting to see how Santa Clara reacts. Had been in a deeper block, had been having a little more success by coming out, pressing a little higher. But I think there's going to be more press from the Santa Clara side in these last minutes. Still 20 to go. And the Broncos have fought through so much to get here. Santa Clara County in California, one of the first to require the shelter at home. No soccer at all going on in the fall for the Broncos. They played their conference matches, won their 11th West Coast Conference title this spring, but had some of those matches still disrupted. They tinker, they adjust, they've switched to formations they've never played before mid-game in this tournament already. What will the response be from the Broncos? Menti, freshman of the year in the West Coast Conference. Boy, that was a good look. And it looks like, speaking of tinkering, they've gone to a three back. I think they did that right before the goal, actually, for Santa Clara. So three in the back. It's either five or six in midfield and one up top. Here's the Menti look. Returning to the pitch. Oh, and those, those are ones that, it, 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 that they rise on you, but you just think, gosh, again, with this weather, the importance of just making the goalkeeper have to save that and getting it within the frame. Nice Wonger looking up, takes a quick little glance to see what's available. And this is just struck perfectly because it, my view was right behind her. It looks like it's gonna sail just a little bit wide, but with that bend on it, it just curved in in time. Beautiful strike and finish. Fifth goal of the season for Nice Wonger. Some frustration really showing right now for Loera and the Broncos. Wanting a card on that play the first time in this NCAA tournament that the Broncos have trailed. And I think at this point in time, Julia and Jen, Santa Clara can afford to go maybe five more minutes in this same formation of a 3-6-1 or essentially a 3-5-2. But if, after that, I think you have to go to a three front, even push more numbers forward. You have nothing to lose at this point in time. And outside of that goal, again, Florida State's still not forcing any turnovers or really for penetrating you in behind. Yeah, you think, Julie, as these seconds tick away, so too do the thoughts in Jerry Smith's mind about when they may need to switch things up a little more. Menti. That front line that has been so dangerous. Those front two, 17 goals between Daquila and Turnbow have just been rendered fairly useless thus far in this match because Florida State hasn't let them get on the ball. Yeah. And I think too, they've got to, as soon as they lose their ball and they're attacking third, when they have the numbers high like they do right now, they've got to press and get the ball back right away because They're unable to hold possession in their attacking half and get any type of rhythm established. <laughs> Foul there against Santa Clara. Reminds you to join us back here at 8 Eastern as we crown another NCAA champion in men's soccer. Marshall takes on Indiana in that final. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's the thundering herd. Waiting for their opportunity to take the field here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Another unique situation here this year as we've got both the men's and women's yeah. championships going on. Same place, same night. Makes for a great night of soccer. Does indeed. Little pause here as Kristen McFarland, the redshirt senior out of Powell, Ohio, for the Florida State Seminoles, requiring some attention. Number 20, Kristen McFarland, taking up all the points. This is actually a great opportunity for Santa Clara to reset, to gather, to say, okay, and as they're doing, here's what we need, here's what we need to do in these final 20.
Izzy Dequila, sophomore out of Mission Viejo, California. Mission Viejo! That's my hometown, baby. Oh, okay. I was wondering. You were starting to get fired up. I wasn't <laughs> sure why. I, I always try to There's be ready two, for it. I wanted to give a shout out to Mission Viejo. There's two. Rachel Bestone as well. Okay. Four that play for the SoCal Blues, which is right down there as well. And I know there's a lot of Blues players watching, so shout out to the Blues. Many Blues players have come through Santa Clara team over the years. Santa Clara having to fight from behind at the moment. Jenna Nicewanger's goal, 63rd minute. Will that be enough for Florida State? Seminoles won each of their first two NCAA championships by a 1-0 scoreline, both in 2014 and 2018. And that's kind of been the name of the game, low scoring. We've had 1-0 scores in the NCAA final seven of the last 10 years. <laughs> It's tight when you get to this last step. That will indicate it uh, against the We were so hopeful for this wide open four to three game. <laughs> Still very good. Touch forward from Nezu, but to Carl for Florida State. McFarland loses it to Luera. Three hundred and fifty-eight minutes have gone by without anybody being able to score on this Florida State defense. They gave up one goal in their second match of this tournament in the third round against Penn State. Since then, held their opponents scoreless. Little back heel, but nothing doing. A lot of Seminoles around the ball every time Santa Clara has it, and in particular, every time number 10 Turnbow or number 9 Dequila have it. But you have to believe the way that two front works, the way this front five attacks, Santa Clara is going to get a chance. Will they take advantage of it? Good call by the referee. Halverson on the turn. Kylie Halverson into the box, diagonal ball, little two in front for Nikola. Oh, that's such a good look, though. No one crashing the backside of that goal. Perhaps still a chance, though. Dequila wants to turn, can't. Turnbow. Big tackle from Madrill. Well, Turbo is still down. Lori's getting so intense out there as under 20 minutes to play now. Well, I just spoke to associate head coach Greg Murphy for Santa Clara, and he said they tried to go with a box, a six in the midfield, and then Nicewanger hit the bomb, so they've changed to a 3-5-2. This was the formation that they always planned on going to if they were chasing the game. He said a few more minutes, and they'll start to press even more, sending more players forward to try to get the equalizer. Great stuff, Lore, right next to that bench. I love it. This is what's made the difference so far. 63rd minute, Florida State finally finding one. A nice swanger again to get seen. She's got the space. Back line doesn't press higher. And she just says, why not? I'm going to take this one. And you could watch that on a loop, couldn't you? That's a beauty. Hits it perfectly. And that left foot of Jenna Nicewanger. As the goal that has the Seminoles out in front with under 20 minutes to play in this national championship match. Second appearance in the final in three years for this Florida State team. They're looking for their third 
national championship in the last seven years. Tremendous work by Mark Corian and his staff. Menti in the box. Some chances are coming for Santa Clara. They're materializing. They just haven't capitalized. Good pressure as well. So Florida State's unable to come out. They win the ball right back. Over 40 minutes without a shot for the Broncos. Will they find it before the night is over? Goes out, and it is a corner. Santa Clara has had just a couple in this match. This will be number three, their first of the second half. And these are the moments you play for, these little flicks off where you get a corner kick. You're scrapping for these second balls, looking for set pieces around the box. Kelsey Turnbow, Turnbow four-time all-first team West Coast Conference, drives at the header too high. Skyler Smith, the one on the end of it. Three goals in this tournament for the junior. Oh, this is such a good ball as well. And look at Smith. No one on her. Just ducks down, hits the top of her head. Maybe it was because two of them coming together at the same time. But what a good look for Santa Clara. Maybe. A little momentum sneaking over to the Santa Clara side. But momentum can only take you so far. Brown is streaking down the middle, Robin Caesar. Brown has two defenders around her, McFarland. Coming up behind, those two connecting, and it is finally bailed out of danger by the freshman, Marissa Bubness. <laughs> that was a little chaotic for Santa Clara. You can see Loretta spinning, going, wait, where are they? Oh, and that one would have maybe put it out of reach. Florida State with a great opportunity to get something. But still we sit, just a one goal game. Score. We'll hold it up. Halverson. Peek over the shoulder for Gore. Too much pace on that ball. Our next MLS match is on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the app Saturday afternoon. It's a Western Conference matchup. The second place LA Galaxy hosts the Portland Timbers. Chicharito leading the league with seven goals. You can catch our coverage beginning at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on Saturday. Soccer certainly staking its claim to demand a viewership with all the sports that are going on collegiately, professionally. Two championships coming your way tonight from Cary, North Carolina. Men's championship coming up after this one, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. And we are trying to decide a winner in the women's championship. Florida State Seminoles on the same field that saw them win their last national championship in 2018, trying to do it again. And there's only so long Santa Clara can allow Florida State to do that now. Time on the side of the Seminoles. I 
I just think they, they've got to take the chances with 15 minutes left. Those are the moments you got to press. You got a player running back towards her own goal. You got to go. And I know there's some tired legs, but you got to take the chances with those. Nice work by Gabby Carl on that far sideline. How's it going down there, Lori Lindsay? Oh, it is wild down here. And Julie <laughs> just mentioned about uh, tired legs. You can hear Jerry Smith and his coaching staff telling his players to press, press, get up. And it's just slow moving. And you just have yep. to think the three it. weeks, all the mental toll for all of these players on both sides yep. is starting to set in. Yeah, you can see it. There's some heavy legs. And it, and, you know, they, to be fair, they didn't get the number of games that they typically would get under their belt as we were talking off the top. They only had seven season games. They had a ton of canceled, forfeited, weird games where they missed, they couldn't play. You contrast that with Florida State who had a fall season, which Santa Clara didn't have. Had a spring season, even though it wasn't official. Pro teams, men's teams. Yeah, certainly a different approach for Florida State. It's paying off so far for the Seminoles, but this one far from over, just over 13 minutes remaining. Yeah, and this is where you gotta start taking the chances. You gotta fly players, you gotta fly balls into the box. Doesn't matter if you win one nil or three nil, still a loss, you gotta take those chances and risk it. One of the things the Florida State defense said they would not allow Santa Clara's attacking players to do was to turn. You can see the way they're defending, just refusing to give them any space to turn and face goal once they get the ball. And defense has been a hallmark of Mark Krikorian's championship teams. It's been another great one for this team this year. Really quite a performance as well by Pavlisko and Lauren Flynn, who have man marked Turnbow and Daquila this entire game. Julie Doyle was out, she's back on for Santa Clara. Returning for the ball, number 13, Julie Doyle. was fouled, but Christine Uncle's going to say not quite yet. Wants to have a word and a card for Lynch in Florida State. Hello, court issued on the play to Florida State number four, Christina Lynch. Loana wanting to send Eden White on her way. Veteran feeling like she saw something there she could exploit. Brown lost it. Loera will try to set things up again. In the fall season for Florida State, the Seminoles had eight shutouts in the 11 matches that they played. Talking about this great defense, they've shut out their last two opponents in this NCAA tournament and are shutting out Santa Clara in this championship match. What a game Emily Madrill has had at that center back position for Florida State. This is a player that has so much upside getting forward, the block shot earlier, such a defensive presence. So good on both sides of the ball. Yuji Zhao 
Add the assist, assist, excuse me, on Nicewanger's goal. Gets it back from Nicewanger and Yuji Zhao. The connection. No, the flag is up. The Seminoles thought they had another goal, but it's taken away by offside. Oh, that is going to be interesting to see back in the in the replay because that would have been too hard a hole to dig out of for Santa Clara. You can see the tired legs of Santa Clara. And th let's take a look at this. That's the ball in offside. Good call. Yep. <laughs> Several Florida State players appear to be in an offside <laughs> position actually on that play. And so still everything within reach for Santa Clara, but they've got to figure out a way to get a shot. Nice Wonger took her shot in the 63rd minute, finished it off. McFarland. Zhao left it for Brown. Nice Wonger trying to set up nearly the identical play that Zhao was called offside on. This time it was for Brown and defended by the Broncos. Alverson on the turn. Gets past Howell. Looking for Turnbow. And foul called on Turnbow. Has to be frustrated. Uh, yeah, you can see the frustration. And really, she had her too. It was unnecessary in the end. Flynn tries to tackle, doesn't quite get it, and it's that last push. She was already falling. I'm not sure you needed it. And you said it, Jules, that she didn't need to make that foul. And these are the moments when Santa Clara needs to stay composed. Florida State as well defensively, but Santa Clara, there's still plenty of time, eight minutes left to go. Make good decisions, look for that extra pass, see if you can pull this Florida State defense out of balance. Santa Clara did have a game in this irregular regular season where they had to win it in double overtime. So they've they played with some drama that was on the road at Pepperdine. Had to score late and did to win that game four to three. There's a player down for Santa Clara. It's to be Marissa Bubness. And still just a little too deep for my liking <laughs> for Santa Clara. You've got to get that whole midfield line higher next to DeQuill and Turnbo so you can help them. Or if they lose the ball, you've got that second wave that's right there. They're still, look at the gap. Just give you a quick look at the Capital One Cup standings. You can find out more at CapitalOneCup.com see how your school is doing in this all-competition contest. Did you notice who was at the top? Oh, I didn't. I was looking at formations. Oh, I should Can you have. guess? Uh, I have no idea who that would be. Oh, maybe Stanford. Oh, maybe. Turnbow has a chance for Santa Clara. Slip in the back. The shot, and they tied it! One mistake, one slip, that is all Kelsey Turnbow needed. And when you have a player as good as Kelsey Turnbow in front of goal, this game is always alive. And you thought Madrill actually had recovered enough, but look at that quick release by Turnbow. And there's the mistake. She gets Madrill to bite. You think she's recovered, but there's so much pace on that shot by Turbo. And that is a nice finish. And that will give some very tired legs from Santa Clara a little bit of life. Jubilation in the stands for those Santa Clara Bronco fans, alumni. 
A little relief, I think, as well, and some life on the field and off for the Broncos right now. Clara Robbins not wanting to let this match get away from Florida State. She's fouled. Loera is on a yellow card in this match. Has to be careful. Cannot afford to lose her in the back. And these are the situations they've been trying to avoid, Santa Clara. We know you have Jenna Nyswanger on the ball who can hit it. It's wet, it's slippery. All sorts of chaos ensue from this range. Nyswanger will give it to Robbins. Robbins looking for another foul, no. Not in the eyes of the referee. How nice is it to have fans? Can we just say oh. that again? <laughs> so nice. And this is what, 25% capacity? What are we at, not yeah. even that? 5,000. 5, yep, officially allowed in. We're getting there. Slowly but surely, people. They are getting treated now. It's all coming down these final few minutes. Santa Clara finding the equalizer in the 84th. Well, we can. In the box for Florida State, the shot, the nice longer. It's deflected up and out. Jenna Nicewanger put Florida State in the lead in the 63rd minute. Continuing to be dangerous. Advantage, perhaps initially allowed, but now the foul was called against Florida State. 22 fouls in this match thus far. Emma Reeves, sophomore who has been a starter much of the season. Coming on late for the Broncos, ready to take this free kick. Reeves will try to get back onto it. One touch to get around Nice Wonger. No score in our first half, but things heating up in the second half of this national championship. 63rd minute, Jenna Nicewanger for Florida State. 84th minute, Kelsey Turnbow with her 10th goal of the season to tie it up. And Florida State being reminded what it's like to have to play in front of <laughs> opposing fans. I think Laura Lindsay's in the middle of that actually, causing it. <laughs> She's throwing gummy bears to the crowd. I can see it now. She's not giving those gummy bears <laughs> She's up. She's never going to give those up. <laughs> That's an excellent point. What was I thinking? There will be fouls. There will be emotion. Who can keep the calmer head as this match continues? A real chance in transition here if Santa Clara wants it. It's Aquila. Bad turn bow, but had to be the right ball. Here is Turnbow. Doyle really working all on her own there for Santa Clara. That is such a good, I'm thinking about the Turnbow goal still. 
Such a good strike. With everything on the line. She had her chance, which she had not gotten many looks. Oh. She didn't miss. One minute remaining. One minute. Well, the national championship match in women's soccer has gone to overtime six times before. Both of these teams have been a part of that, actually, and have both come out on the losing end. In 2013, Florida State lost in overtime to UCLA. In 2002, Santa Clara lost in overtime to Portland. Looks like we're gonna leave, need a few more minutes to see who can turn their fortunes around in this match. Ten, Perhaps one nine, last opportunity. Madrid will six, try five, to take it away. Four, three, two, one. Well, there is a whistle before that time stops. Christina Uncle stopping the clock, wanting to make sure she checks on Clara Robbins, who is down. This will, in all likelihood, send us to overtime, but a couple of players require some attention. Robbins is down, as is Doyle for Santa Clara, though Doyle, good to see both of them actually now getting back to their feet. It will be interesting to see what Santa Clara comes out with in this first part of overtime. They ended this second half in a 3-5-2, as Lori and I were discussing, had a couple formation shifts in there, a 3-6-1, started the game in a 4-4-2. I have a feeling they're going to stay on that offensive foot, keep it in a 3-5-2. If you're Santa Clara, knowing Jerry, Three seconds on the clock. Looks like it's, it's just going to be a drop ball, I think, here from the referee. That's kind of how I feel as well. Mark Krikorian <laughs> just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, they're going to give it to Florida State and just tell them to boot it. Two, one, <laughs> And zero. that will end send us to overtime. Florida State had this one in control until the 84th minute when Kelsey Turnbow kept the Santa Clara Broncos hopes alive. We'll tell you all about overtime when we come back to Cary, North Carolina. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina. Yes, we need a little more time to decide a national champion in women's soccer. Florida State, Santa Clara all tied at one after regulation. Here's how we got here. Here's why we need Let's overtime, see Julie Fowdy. I love it. Jenna Nyswanger, no one steps to Jenna. White doesn't come fast enough. And she said, okay, I'm just gonna knock this off the post. And what a beauty, that's what got Florida State on the board. But Santa Clara, as tired as they looked at moments in that second half, Turnbow capitalizing on the mistake. And what a nice finish, quick release to beat Roquet. Madrill can't get up and recover. And here we are in overtime, folks. <laughs> so if you need a little refresher, here's what it looks like. I'm gonna put two 10 minute periods in front of you here, but it is a sudden victory, which means if we have a goal, it is over. Once subs come out, they cannot come back in. And if we're still tied after that second 10 minute period, we head to penalty kicks somewhere. Christina Roquet and Florida State have been in their last two NCAA matches. <laughs> Very solid. Very solid in penalty kicks. If I'm Santa Clara, I'm thinking, I do not want to take Florida State to penalty kicks. If, if you're Florida State right now, are you playing for that? You're tired, Santa Clara has the momentum. Do you just try to hang on and be a little more no, defensive? No, because I think actually Florida State had more of the game in that second half. They had the chances, they had the looks. And I think they have the legs. So if I'm Florida State, I push this game 
No one ever wants to end it in penalty kicks. You don't want to leave it to chance. Everyone awaiting the whistle from our referee. Off we go. Santa Clara in the red, moving left to right in this first overtime period. Florida State right to left on your screen in white. And if we get there, we don't know. The penalty kick shootouts, the more confident team you'd think has to be Florida State, not just because their last two, but the Seminoles have advanced their last four penalty kick shootouts in the NCAA tournament. Offside here against McFarland will take away this opportunity. And it's actually just the opposite, Julie, for Santa Clara. Interestingly, the Broncos, two and three all time in the NCAA tournament in penalty kicks, have not advanced their last three. Mm, that one close, but it looks like Lorera stepped up just in time to catch McFarlane offside in an offside position. Two players down, no whistle. Madrill, the one to come away with it for Florida State. He's gonna have to find another way out. I might have missed this before, but it looks like they are still staying with that 3-5-2, but they pushed Loera out to that right back of the three backs. I believe she was in that center back position beforehand. And they have Bubness now in that center back of the three center backs playing. Gabby Carl has Yu Zhao curling off in front of her. Zhao had the assist on Nice Wonger's goal in the 63rd minute. Beautifully touched ball into the box, but it gets up and over all the Florida State players in white. I'm guessing that adjustment, Lorera to the right, is a reaction to trying to get a little more pressure on Zhao. Menti, stopped by Madrill. Robbins has Yuji Zhao. Ball bounces her a little wider than she might have liked, but could still work her magic. Oh, McFarland didn't run after it, and Nicholas is evil to make the grab. Good solid game by Nicholas. She's listed in the book as a redshirt freshman, but this is actually a junior at Santa Clara. What a story she's been. First year, they redshirted her because they had a really good senior captain and goal. Second year, ACL. Turnbow doing all she can to set the Broncos up, but the offside flag says no. Turnbow showing how good she is on holding defenders, spinning them, and turning them. I mean, this is a master class of just holding and then finding that gap. Back to Nicholas, sophomore year, ACL, junior year, really this year, which is her redshirt freshman year still. She, the COVID hit, and so Jerry Smith was laughing, saying it's taken her three years, but she's finally in goal. And what a job she is doing for Santa Clara this year. There was a lot of contact as that ball went out of bounds. It will be a goal kick for Florida State. There you get a look at Marley Nicholas. As an assist on the year, too. I always like to point those out, Julie. <laughs> Anytime you get a goalkeeper assist, you're going right. to get a little extra love. It should really count for like 10 points, not just one. I agree. Boisterous Santa Clara crowd making its presence felt. See some specks of green for the Marshall men who will be coming up next, taking on Indiana in the men's championship. Once we find a winner, 
When you want to watch Fox, call me. And Lori, I don't know what it's got to be like down there, but it seems <laughs> crazy from over here. <laughs> well, we might have limited capacity, but this place is rocking, and most of the noise is coming from the Santa Clara Broncos alumni that's right behind me. I got to speak to them at halftime. They are led by Leslie Osborne. They got everyone together and said, we are going to this game. We're taking red eyes. Here we are. And they said it's all about putting Santa Clara back on the map, and they've certainly done that tonight. Uh, show 20 up. years, 20 years <laughs> since that that victory in 2001, and they're all in the stands. I love it. I even heard Allie Wagner start yelling at one of the babysitters from her uh, her babysitters who's on the team, saying, "You better press! You better press!" <laughs> that would be that would be Kylie Halverson, by the way. Allie risking the chance of losing her babysitter by yelling, wanting to win a national championship. Uh, they're literally waiting to get to a win. <laughs> Well, you saw Leslie Osborne there too. Kelsey Turnbow for a moment, who had the equalizer in the 84th minute for Santa Clara. Turnbow is the first player at Santa Clara to have hit the 25 goal, 25 assist mark in her career since Leslie Osborne did it in 2003. And now, though, let's not look too far from what's happening because Florida State, with a free kick, set pieces so dangerous for this Seminole team. Yuji Zhao. Robbins has time to collect, regroup. McFarlane wanted it, got it. Brings it down nicely for Brown. This is Emily Madrill, the center back, still in the attack for Florida State. Quick toes, Johnny Brown, two. But a goal kick coming for Florida State. A quarter kick, excuse me, for Florida State. Madrill is everywhere. There's a shot of her, Emily Madrill, the center back, sliding in to block shots on defense, getting to the other in line on offense. Nice, Wonger swings it in. Jow. Out. Corner. Howell been quiet in this second part of the game. This is maybe when she rises to this occasion. There's number six, Jalen Howell. So good on set pieces as we've talked about. Swanger service again, a good one, Robbins, it's in the box! Not cleared yet, there is Howell, gets on it, fires a shot, blocked! <laughs> Carl, not where McFarland could get to it. I... Look at the numbers in front of Nicholas, they Florida State wants to put so many numbers in that box and then McFarland there to try and clean up that second ball in front of Nicholas which is so hard to get to because of the traffic in front of her. If this does not get your heart racing, overtime, sudden victory for a national championship, I'm not sure what will. Clara Robbins. Zhao. Oh my, Gabby Carl wide open, but Zhao could take One it herself. One minute remaining. One minute. Zhao being chased. Takes the shot and hits the crossbar. Oh, you take all the time you need, Yuji Zhao. That's what you're going to unleash. <laughs> the Chinese international player putting her stamp on the game, seeing she's got a little bit of window, doesn't want to go wide to Carl. Uh, almost sneak, sneaks one in under the crossbar there. Santa Clara's had to play a lot of defense in this overtime. Perhaps a little more. Pavlisko says, where is everybody? She finds Zhao, finds McFarland, edge of the box. Bumped off. And Nicholas yeah. left. 
Oh, no, the whistle Seven. is blown. Six. Five. Well, let's see what the call of Christina Uncle is. It will be a kick saying that Nicholas must have had possession there. Yes. And I think that's a good call. But Yu Ji Zhao taking over this game. That is such a good ball into McFarlane. And again, that touch. Here's the replay. Oh! I don't, I, I don't, I don't think <laughs> she had possession. I think either way, it came off the, bo the post anyways. But, woof, that's a good first overtime for Florida State. High drama in Cary, North Carolina, and another overtime period on the way. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Getting their game faces on in the stands and on the field. Allie Wagner, who was the hero for Santa Clara in their only national championship in 2001, looking on as her Broncos got outshot 3 0 in that first overtime period by Florida State. Yeah. And, and this is something where they're going to have to decide as Santa Clara, are you going to have to take some chances? You're going to have to get some numbers forward which is gonna put you at risk in the back. But one person they have got to keep an eye on if you're Santa Clara is Yu Ji Zhao because she just threaded that ball into McFarland. She almost gets it on the other side. They call it the foul on her with the goalkeeper, but Yu Ji Zhao feeling it right now. Yeah, she's really seemed to come alive. I mean, she's been electric. She's been involved this entire match, had the assist on Nice Wonger's goal in the 63rd minute. Nicholas had to be ready. Christina Roque saying, look, I got your back if we go to PKs, but usually you just go ahead and keep creating like you are in the offensive third. We don't need to go there. Although I will tell you, this has already been a record-setting tournament in terms of penalty kick shootouts. We've had 10 that ties for the most all time, despite the fact that we've had fewer games in this tournament. Come on, Lori Hildred, you know better than to jinx us like that. I just wanted the world to know, Lori, don't you think that's fair? <laughs> it is, it is fair. But we're gonna see one change in that back for Santa Clara. Lueda is gonna move centrally again where she originally started this game. They had moved her out wide right to be able to get on the ball more, but didn't happen. So now she'll be back centrally. Well, that was one of the things you were looking at, Julius. Here we go, overtime number two on the way. It is sudden victory. A goal will end us early if we do not find one. After the end of 10 minutes, we will go to a shootout. Clara Robbins touches it wide. Carl working her way into the area and then a little too strong on the touch. Good energy by Gabby Carl, the Canadian international, getting forward from that left back position. Little burst of energy. These are the moments you need. Touch gets away from her, but as you went, wind down to, and, and mind you, Florida State has played double overtime games that, have, as we talked about, that have gone to penalty kicks. They've had a long season, so. We've talked about Santa Clara's tired legs, but as well for Florida State, there was three rest days in between these games, which helps a ton. Yeah. And that's different. That's, that's more than they've typically been used to having. This could be trouble. Halverson going after it, and Roque slides out to meet her. Halverson, and a bright spot off the bench for Santa Clara all season long. Foul committed by Santa Clara. Turnbow, all she needs is a fraction of a chance. Another good looking diagonal ball, Daquila just being hounded by Pavlisko. They may have given her a little shove afterward. <laughs> that was for the 93 minutes of <laughs> chasing 
her around. Tequila's like, I've had it. <laughs> You've been next to me for 93 minutes. No, sorry, 103 minutes. <laughs> Didn't add in the first overtime. Uh, you, you talked about that earlier, how frustrating that can frustrating. be. frustrating, yeah. And then it gets in your head. Yeah. You start thinking about that I don't have space, I don't have time to turn, I'm not getting the ball. McFarlane literally laying it all out, trying to get to the ball. McFarland, a red shirt senior for the Seminoles, was a part of that 2018 NCAA championship team as a number of these Florida State players were. For Santa Clara, they talked about ushering in a new era, have all those greats in the stands. They want to make this name for themselves. And they've been frustrated by a few calls in this match, I know, but we've seen fouls called on both sides, and this will set Florida State up. Oof, dangerous oh, spot to give it away, Santa too. Clara. SCU chance breaking out from the crowd as Nicewanger uses the left foot. Carl gets it through. Reeves headed it away. Carl can't quite catch the ball. Final pass just a little bit off tonight for Clara Robbins. But there's got to be more pressure on the ball for Santa Clara. Clara Robbins in those positions will eventually start to hurt you. And that's when you've just got to step a little bit faster. Zhao wins this right back for Florida State. Not a great bit of distribution from Nicholas. Zhao has it again. Carlos Bunt still in the box. Nicholas bails out her defense. <laughs> Reeves gives her a little pat of thanks. <laughs> Well done by Reeves on this one, though, to get in the way. Great again, little slip ball by Yu Zhi Zhao, but there's Reeves holding off McFarland. <laughs> now, I think Nicholas could give Reeves a little pat as well. She did well to hold off McFarland in that situation, keep her away from the ball. Under four minutes remaining, the second overtime of this NCAA championship match. Turnover. Oh, a big jersey tug by Jalen Howell. That's definitely a yellow. Fourth yellow card issued of this match, two per team. Professional foul, if you will. She's been hobbling a little bit, I could tell, with Jalen Howell. And I if this is a cramp or she caught herself there. Clearly a yellow, an easy yellow. yellow and forward, and forward, that's forward, some forward, frustration and tired legs as well. Howell and Lynch on a yellow for Florida State. Nezu and Loera on a yellow for Santa Clara. And it is Loera. Chases it back down. 
trying to get it up to her front line and does. Turnbow is fouled just outside the area. Make that yellow card number five. Getting chippy in these closing minutes. Very chippy. Lorera having a game as well. The two center backs from Florida State and then Lorera, center back from Santa Clara. Both of them playing so well. Flynn, the guilty party for Florida State, but the much more pressing issue now, this free kick coming for Santa Clara. Remember, a goal ends it. And really so unnecessary. You do not want to give up a free kick in this area to a team like Santa Clara that you know has the potential to step up to this ball and knock it in. And that's just tired minds and tired legs. Decision by committee over here on who's going to take it, perhaps. And another yellow. This time Yuji Zhao gets it. Yellow card issued to the Seminole with number 33, Yuji Zhao. It's the third yellow in the second overtime period against the Seminoles. No shots in overtime for Santa Clara. Will that change here? Luana drives it into the wall. That was taken by number 22, Alex Luera. Howell. To Brown. Santa Clara with a chance perhaps to try to keep the ball down on this end. But Brown and Zhao find a way out. Nice Wonger keeps it going forward. Nice Wonger on the run. This boxed out as the ball goes out. 2.43 left. Well done by Eden White, chasing that one down, letting it roll for the goal kick. ticking, pressure mounting as we inch closer to the end of this second overtime period. Doyle and Carl have seen an awful lot of one another throughout this match. Robbins. Loera comes crashing through but commits the foul. <laughs> Last gas right here. Can you get a flick off of this free kick? Can you get something? Are you willing to send a few numbers here? Florida State holding two back, two holding mids. Now, perhaps one of the brightest sparks for Florida State. Couldn't keep it with McFarland. Under a minute to play. Two times in NCAA championship history. The final has gone to a penalty kick shootout. One of those was last year, the Stanford Cardinal eliminating the North Carolina Tar Heels in 2019 in penalty kicks. Are we headed that direction again? Robbins, some quick touches, that's Madrill. Can't get there. Robbins turns it around. Looking for someone. Jow's in the box, and Nicholas 
went up to get it, snuff out that attack. That was Jody Brown, excuse me, making the run, trying to make something of it, but indeed, penalty kicks it is to decide a national champion. Catch your breath, take a quick break, come right back. We'll have the shootout when we return. And so, it all comes down to this. Shots from the mark, if you like to be technical Let's for the terms. Let's go! <laughs> I love it! Florida State, you have to imagine, comes in here extremely confident. They've advanced their last two rounds. And the last four times in the NCAA tournament, they've been oh, in a yeah. shootout. They have advanced for Santa Clara, just the opposite. The last time the Broncos were there was 2018. They have failed to advance their last three. But these players, these teams, they're the ones to decide who will be a national champion. Best of five, back and forth we go. And Santa Clara, He's going to start us off. Julie Doyle, a senior, to start off this shootout for the Broncos. Three PK saves in shootouts already for Roque in this tournament. attempt in the shootout that hasn't happened the last two rounds. That is so huge just to get that first one on the board. Julie Doyle taking a little while to get to that ball. Doesn't hit it too far to the right. But still a nice finish and a great confidence boost for Santa Clara. Clara Robbins has led off the shootout for Florida State in both the quarterfinals and the semifinals, converted them both. Robbins has been so consistently good in these PKs in the last two rounds. Just opened up a little bit too much. <laughs> and now a freshman for Santa Clara, Sally Menti, the West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year against the freshman in goal, Roque, for Florida State. She means it, hits that corner. Santa Clara, two for two. Minty giving a look back to Nicholas, saying you got this. You still get the feeling Roque's got a save in her. Guesses the wrong way on this. Menti calmly places it. It looks like she's going right. So you can see why Roque is thinking that and then pulls it back. And you wonder what these Florida State shooters now, Santa Clara has had a chance to see them in the last two shootout, shootouts. Do they change yeah. what they try to do? Do they go a different way? Emily Madrill, the shooter for Florida State, has converted her first two attempts. Off the post again! Oh no! A disastrous start for the Seminoles in this championship shootout. And it's interesting you say that, Jen, because when they've seen you twice before, you start to get in your head, should I change? Do I need to push it a little harder? Do I need to push it into the side net a little more? You're seeing them just miss. And it could be a consequence of that because you do have that in the back of your head. 
Kelsey Turnbow now. That left foot so good, it's not gonna miss, and the pressure really on the Seminoles now. Florida State cannot afford another miss. It was Gabby Carl's shot that won it in the semifinals from the spot that put Florida State in this spot. And the Canadian International has to hit it now. Carl does keep Florida State in it. Solid. Confident. Little stutter step. Try and get the keeper off her rhythm. Well, the Seminoles need some help now. Izzy Dequila can be the hero for Santa Clara. Dequila! champions! A national championship moment so long in the making. Heartbreak for a Florida State team that had been perfect in their previous two shootouts. But this one belongs to Santa Clara in front of their great alumni and fans who made the trip out here to Cary, North Carolina to celebrate this new era for Santa Clara. Uh, and what a wonderful chess match that turned out to be. Different formations different tactics, different looks, both teams, you could tell, giving it everything they had in what has turned out to be a long slog through COVID, through a pandemic, through a bubble, through it all, a great season for Florida State, but it took 20 years for Santa Clara, and they're back with that national championship. So many questions asked of all of us, of all of you, of all of these players during this season. They came into tonight with one left unanswered, and that was who would win a national championship. We now know for just the second time in program history, it's the Santa Clara Broncos. What a college cup. What a year! What a, and what, what a performance a by Santa Clara. Congratulations to the Broncos for Julie Foudy, Lori Lindsay, our entire ESPN crew. I'm Jen Hildreth. You can go over to ESPN3 for the trophy presentation, then come back here as the men of Marshall take on Indiana, that men's championship coming your way. For now, we say so long from Cary, North Carolina, and congrats to the Broncos. <laughs>